Hey everybody, welcome back. So today we're gonna to be talking about graphing general sinusoidal curves. So really quick, sinusoidal, all that means is some kind of transformed sine and cosine, which I have below here. Um, so let's recall a couple of things before we get into this. First of all, these are the types of functions that we're gonna be dealing with. Y equal to A sine of B times X minus H plus K. So that's a transformed sine curve or a transformed cosine curve. And what I want you guys to take away from this video is a process for how to graph these, okay? Now remember from your activity in class, remember these numbers here mean things. So first of all, and I should be careful here, the absolute value of A represents the amplitude. Remember amplitude's a positive distance. Okay, and remember amplitude means the distance from a peak to the midline. B, it's not the period, so I'm gonna put this in quotes. So I'm actually, yeah, I'm gonna say B is not the period, but it impacts the period. Remember period, and hopefully you guys did this in class, period is equal to two pi divided by B for sine and cosine, okay? H, represents the phase shift. Or you can think of this as a horizontal transformation, same thing. And then y equals k, so that number on the outside here represents the midline, so the line that cuts your trig function in half. Okay. So keep these in mind. And also recall from the last video that there are five, what I called five key angles for sine and cosine. And these angles were zero, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and two pi. So if you think about this, these are all the angles that are on the X and the Y axis. Now remember, the reason why I called these key angles here was because if you plug these into sine and cosine, you get really, really nice outputs. And remember, our goal today is to graph, so we wanna be finding nice angles to plug in. We don't wanna be plugging anything that's giving us square root two over two or square root three over two, because that'll make our lives a little bit more complicated. Okay? But in any case, remember those are our five key angles. All right, so let's see how to graph a general sinusoidal curve. And again, this is a process that I'm going to share with you. Once you guys get enough practice, um, this should become a lot faster. But in any case, here we go. All right, so y equals minus 4 cosine of 2 times x plus pi plus 1. So the first thing I recommend whenever you're trying to graph um, a sinusoidal function, put your, de put your detective caps on. Identify certain things. So find the amplitude, the period, the phase shift, and the midline. Okay, so our amplitude in this case, okay, remember that's coming from this number here, is four, okay, period is two pi divided by this number, which in this case is just pi. The phase shift, now you wanna be careful here. Oops, shift is so it's not plus pi it's actually minus pi okay and that's coming from remember what do our sinusoidal curves look like they look like x minus h okay so since we have a plus here we want the opposite and then finally the midline is given by the number on the outside here on the very outside so the midline in this case is y equals one Okay. So these are things we want to keep in mind when we go to look at our graph. We want to make sure that the distance from the peak to the midline is 4. We want to make sure it has a period of pi, that it's been shifted in some way, and that y equals 1 does cut it in half. All right, now for some arithmetic. So next we want to find nice angles to plug in. Okay, So we want to find what I'm going to call the new five key angles. Okay, remember we had all the old five key angles here, zero pi over two pi, three pi over two, and two pi. But the problem with the transform trig function like this, these angles have moved, okay? And so what we wanna do first is figure out, well, where have they moved to, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all the old key angles and we're gonna set it equal to the inside of our trig function here. 
And what that's going to do is it's going to tell us exactly where the old key angles move to. Okay, so again, we're going to take our old key angle. I'm going to set it equal to the inside of my sinusoidal curve. And we're going to solve for x. And again, this is going to tell us where that angle went. It's going to give us a nice new key angle. Okay. So divide both sides by 2, we get 0 is equal to x plus pi. Moving pi over to the left-hand side, we'll get x is equal to minus pi. So the angle 0 has moved to minus pi. Okay, and that's an angle that we're going to want to plug into this function. Okay, so that we get a nice output, something that we can graph a little bit easier. Okay, so that's only one key angle. So what you want to do is you want to do this for all the other key angles as well, which I've gone ahead and done for us already. Okay, so again, we take pi over 2, the next key angle, set it equal to the inside of our transformed cosine function, and then we solve for x. Okay, and then do the same thing for pi. Okay, we get this. Same thing for 3 pi over 2. We get this. And then finally for 2 pi. We get this. Okay. All right, so now these are our new key angles. These are the angles we want to plug into our function so that we get nice outputs and we'll get things that we can graph a little bit easier. Okay, so the next step, once you've found these five key angles, plug it into the function. Okay, so I set up a chart here for us. On the very left, I have our new key angles. And then in the middle, we have the function that we're going to plug it into. And then on the right, we have the point that's going to be on the graph. Okay, so let's start by plugging in our first key, new key angle, minus pi. So if you plug that into the function, you're going to get this. Okay, notice on the inside of cosine, the pi's cancel out. So you'll have 0 times 2, which is 0. So this just becomes minus 4 cosine of 0 plus 1. Now looking at your unit circle, remember cosine of 0 is 1. So this will become minus 4 times 1 plus 1, which is minus 3. Okay, a very, very nice output there. Not too shabby. Okay, so the point that's on our graph is minus pi comma minus 3. Okay. And now we want to do the same thing with all the other new key angles. I'll go ahead and reveal that. Plug all your new key angles into the function. Use your unit circle when you need to. And you'll get the other four points in this case. Uh-oh. I accidentally erased this one. This is back at minus three there. All right. Now, uh, one thing I want you to uh, notice here, I know this, this might seem like a lot of work. Once you guys get the practice down, you're going to notice a lot of cool things. For instance, notice that when you plug these into, when you plug your new key angles into your function, you are essentially getting your old key angles back out here. Okay, so as long as you know sine and cosine of 0, pi over 2 pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi, this becomes a really, really fast process. Um, just practice, practice, practice. All right. Now that we have this, we graph our points, connect, copy and paste, and we're good to go. We've done the hard part. All right. So let's go ahead and graph our points. We have minus pi minus 3. Okay. So minus pi. And notice here, um, I, didn't, I didn't talk about this, but here's our, my x and y axis. And notice each tick mark here is representing pi over 4. And the way I got that, if we look at our old key angles, what I recommend is, I'm sorry, when you look at your new key angles, um, let your tick marks be pi over the biggest denominator that you see. That's usually a good rule of thumb for that. So that's what I did here. We had pi over 4, so each tick mark is technically pi over 4. In any case, our first point, minus pi minus 3. So this Function is going to start like this. And then we have minus 3 pi over 4, 1. Okay, minus 3 pi over 4, 1 is right here. Minus pi over 2, 5. OK, 
Okay, then we'll have minus pi over four back down to one, and then minus uh, zero minus three. And just to show you guys those points again, minus pi over four, one, zero and three. Okay. Now, if you're wondering about the y-axis there, how did I set that up? Again, what all I did is I looked at my y outputs here. And notice I started at minus three and went all the way up to five. Okay, so I found my smallest and my biggest, and that's what I graphed on the y-axis. Okay, but once we're done with that, now we connect the curve. Okay, so notice that looks like cosine. Remember, a one period of cosine looks like this, although this is inverted because we have that negative sign in the front of our function here. But in any case, this is one period of our transform trig function. Now, like we did in the sign video, all you have to do to complete this picture is copy and paste. Okay. And then repeat. Repeat. And repeat. So again, what's really nice about these trig functions is once you get one pattern, all you have to do is copy and paste. It's really nice. Although getting that one pattern is not, may not be as nice, but once you have that, you're good to go. And this is the process for graphing a general trig function. Again, just to outline, first I recommend put your detective caps on, identify amplitude, period, phase shift, and midline. Two, find your new key angles by setting the old key angles equal to the inside of your trig function and solving for x. Plug in your new key angles to get nice points to graph. Graph one picture, one pattern, and then copy and paste.